Welcome to our discussion on decimal fractions. As you can see, we're basically just learning how to convert from fractions to decimals. So a little refresher of what a decimal number is. And we know that decimal numbers are really just fractions in a different form. And normally we think of them as being, you know, powers of 10 for each digit. But the entire fractional number together as a whole uh, I'm sorry, the entire decibel number together as a whole can be considered um, you know, a number over one fraction instead of multiple pieces. A terminating decimal is what we call uh, a decimal that stops. It doesn't keep going on and on forever. Whereas a repeating decimal will go on forever. Some of the more common repeating decimals is like one third, which if you put in your calculator will become 0.333333 and the threes will just keep going on and on and on forever. So for instance, if we want to convert 5 eighths to a decimal form, well, of course, we could just stick it in technology. Or if we want to do the long division, we put in our decimal point because we know it's going to be less than 1, right? And we just start doing the long division until we get a remainder of 0, and we see it's 0.625. That would be a terminating decimal. To remind ourselves, denominator just means the number on the bottom of the fraction. And when we're dealing with decimal numbers, uh, the number on the bottom of the fraction is always going to be a power of 10. So for instance, 11 over 1,000 is 11 thousandths. And we know that the first decimal, or sorry, the first uh, number past the decimal point, the first digit is the tens place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. So there's 11 thousandths. Also, you just know that three zeros means you got to move the decimal place three spots. So you start with it to the right of 11, right? Because that's 11. And then you move it over three spots, and that's where you get 0 0.011. Okay, shop fractions are fractions that, um, you know, come up in everyday applications in the United States. Everybody else uses the metric system. But for us... Shop fractions are the types of things that you would see on a ruler or a tape measure, right? Or any kind of uh, typical U.S. Uh, unit measuring device. And basically, it's one or it's, it's a number over a power of two, you know, so one half, one fourth, which is two squared, one eighth, which is two cubed, one sixteenth, which is two to the fourth, one thirty second, 2 to the 5th, 64th, and so on and so forth. Normally, most things don't go any more accurate than uh, a 64th, unless you're using you know, really um, accurate tools like micrometers and things like that. If you're trying to figure out the closest fractional equivalent in our U.S. system that is going to be equivalent to a fraction, I'm sorry, equivalent to a decimal, then what you need to do is convert that decimal into some sort of fraction and then figure out what's closest to it or, you know, start guessing and checking with kind of known fractions and see where you go. Like, for instance, 0.741 is pretty darn close to 0.75, which we know is three-fourths. And then from there, you can adjust. Okay, well, if we want to go a little bit smaller, right, we would go to eights. We know that three-fourths is the same thing as six eighths. Well, 0.74 is a little bit smaller than three fourths or six eighths. So maybe you try five eighths and see what that is. If that's still bigger than 0.741, then you go, okay, double five eighths, that gives me 10 sixteenths. And now I need to go smaller. So I try nine sixteenths. And you keep doing that until you capture something that's smaller than it. And then if you want to get closer, you, you know, double it again and then go one step bigger. So you can kind of go back and forth, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, until you can kind of get as close as you want to that number. Now, the other thing you can do is you could just take 0.74, figure out what it is as a fraction, and then start comparing it with other fractions using the bow tie technique. It just depends on how you want to do it. It's, um, it's probably easiest to just start with that three-fourths, move to six-eighths, and then 
change it. Well, instead of six eighths, I know it's got to be smaller, so I'm going to try seven eighths. See how close that is. Okay, now from seven eighths, I'm going to go to uh, 14 sixteenths. And then it's still a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to try 13 sixteenths, you know, or it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try 15 sixteenths, right? And, and keep doing that until you get as close as you need to get. Now, in, in practical applications, if you're trying to find the best size wrench for a certain size bolt, um, you know, you always want a little bit of clearance. And in these cases, you would choose the higher of your two options once you get to the two, because obviously the smaller one ain't going to fit. Now, repeating decimals. As I mentioned before, one-third is 0.3 repeating. And you can write a bunch of those with the three little dots, which means it goes on forever. I think that's called an ellipsis. Um, if it has a different pattern, like for instance, 272727, two, seven, two, seven, then you can write it like that. But you could also um, designate uh, repeating decimals with a little vertical line. Sorry, a little horizontal line. Boy, I'm terrible today. A horizontal line over what repeats. So in this case, the three repeats, so you just have the line over the three. Here, the two seven, right? The 27 repeats, so the line has to go over two and seven. So you know that it goes two seven, two seven, two seven. If you just put it over the two, then that would be two, 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 two. Completely different, right? Decimal. You can convert fractions to decimals always very easily by doing the long division. And once you start getting a repeating pattern, that's when you can stop and just put the repeating little bar on it. Now, what if you need to go the other way and you need to um, take a repeating decimal and write it as a fraction? Well, there's a really easy trick. And it's all about just nines. So if you have a single digit repetition pattern, right? So like 0.3 repeating or 0.7 repeating or 0.2 repeating, whatever it happens to be, to make it a fraction, it's always whatever that digit is over nine. So seven repeating becomes seven ninths. Three repeating becomes three ninths, which of course reduces to one third. And we already knew that three repeating was one third. See, so it works. 27 repeating, right? Two seven, two seven, two seven becomes two seven over nine nine because you have a two digit repetition pattern, right? So you need two nines. Just like if you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three repeating, then that would go over nine, nine, nine because there's three digits. You need three nines. And then, of course, you always have to reduce if you can because the bottom is always going to be just a bunch of nines. Really, the only thing that's going to uh, reduce top and bottom is going to be threes and nines. And we know the trick for if something is divisible by three is you just add up the digits. And if that number is divisible by three, the whole thing is divisible by three. And for nine, it's the same thing. If you add up the digits and that thing's divisible by nine, then the whole thing is divisible by nine. So 27, two plus seven is nine. And we go, aha, it's divisible by nine. 27 divided by nine is three. And then of course, 99 divisible by nine is 11. We go one plus two plus three, right? That's three, four, five, six. Six is divisible by three, but not by nine. So we could divide it by three, which gives us 41. Divide the bottom by three, which gives us three, three, three. And 41 is pretty much, you know, all we're going to do because we see the bottom is just going to be divisible by three and then 111. And that's not divisible by either of those two things. Okay, if you want to know the uh, generalized pattern for writing any repeating decimal as a fraction, it's pretty easy. So in the previous examples, this whole nine trick only works if the repeating decimal starts right at the decimal point, right? So it's 0.7 repeating, 0.27 repeating, 0.123 repeating. As soon as you have something like this, where it's 0.5 and then the three repeats, now you're in trouble. That You can't just put that 53 over 99. It's not going to work. What you have to do is use a very simple technique. You go, okay, well, I know 0.53 repeating, right? Whatever your decimal is, we're just going to use 0.53 as this example. I know that my decimal equals a fraction. It equals a number. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to call that number n, and then I'll figure out what it is later. The next step is you need to multiply both sides of the equation by a power of 10, so that you get rid, you basically push every number to the left of the decimal point 
that isn't the repeating number. So in this case, we just need to move the 5 over. Let's say we started and it was 0.27 and then 3 repeating. Then we would have to multiply both sides by 100. So we would move both the 2 and the 7 and then we'd have 27.3 repeating. See what I'm saying? So it's a power of 10 so that you can get everything on the left side of the decimal except for the repeating digit or repeating pattern, right? The same thing would be if this was, you know, 0.5, let's say 37 repeating and went 37, 37, 37. We would still just multiply both sides by 10 to get just the 0.37 all by itself. So you basically are isolating the repeating stuff all by itself. That's the first step. Now, once you've done that, the next step is you repeat the process as far as you're going to multiply both sides by a power of 10. But this time, the number, right, the power of 10 that you use is dictated by how big the pattern is. Because now you want exactly one of the repeating powers or repeating decimal to be on the left-hand side of the decimal point. So in this case, we have a three repeating, we have one digit, so we need to multiply um, by 10 more, right, to get 100n, to get that three over there. So now we have 53.3 repeating. So we've got these two equations. We go 10 to the n equals this, 100 to the n equals that. Again, another example, if, let's say, um, our original number was n equals 0 0.523 repeating, then we would originally do 100n to get 52, sorry, 0.3 repeating. Then we would multiply by 10 again to get 1000n equals 523.3 repeating. Okay? If, however, we started with, uh, let's say, n equals 0 0.3 five, two, seven, and the two sevens repeated. Then we would go 10n equals 5.27. See, we've isolated that repetition. And then we need one whole repetition to the other side, so we've got to multiply both sides by 100, right? So 1,000n equals 527.27 repeating. And, and that's, that's the pattern. That's what we'll always do regardless of you know, what we start with, it's a pretty simple pattern that we're just multiplying by um, powers of 10 to first isolate the repetition all by itself. And then the second one is to get exactly one of the repetitions on the left-hand side and then still just a repetition by itself on the other side. So we'll go back to the original one and we see that we are left with these two, right? The first one where we just have the repetition by itself, the second one where we have one piece of it on the left side. And then all you're going to do now is stack and do a simple subtraction. So we take the bigger one, subtract the smaller one from it. Of course, 100 and minus 10 and just gives us 90 of them. And then we stack our decimals and we subtract. And the reason why we did exactly one pattern is so when we stack the decimals, we still have these things are alike, right? So when you subtract, they cancel each other out, and you just get 53 minus 5 is 48, and your repeating decimal is gone. Then to solve for n, right, you just divide both sides by 90, which is here. Then we reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce until we're done, and we get 8 fifths is 0.53 repeating. So that little simple, you know, recipe works for all repeating decimals to be able to change them into fractions. How about rounding? Well, the rounding rules don't change ever, right? It just depends on how uh, far we're going to round. Do we round to one decimal, two decimals, three decimals, and so on and so forth? But the rule is always the same. However far you're going to round, you look to the, the next number to the right, and if that's a five or above, you round up. If it's smaller than five, you round down. It's really just that simple, right? So if we're going to round to the nearest tenth, which is the first number here, we look at the second number, that's a 5, we round up, and that's where we get 0.2. If we're going to round to two places, so we want two decimals, right? So we look at the third one, it's smaller than 5, we round down, there's my 0.15. If we want to round to three decimals, right? So 1, 2, 3, there's my three decimals, so I want to round to here. I look to the fourth, it's bigger than 5, so we round up 0.154. Just that simple, don't make it harder than it is. 
To do calculations with fractions and decimals, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and, and dividing, and so on and so forth, it's usually simpler to convert your fractions to decimals and then work with decimals. Now, if you have a, uh, a calculator or any kind of technology, then, of course, um, converting from fractions to decimals is super easy. Um, even if you don't, you could always do long division. But working with decimals is always easier than fractions. So if we had to do this, it would be much easier to take that and convert it to a decimal. Now, we, and we know how to make this an improper fraction, right? 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21. This would be 21 over 8. And then if we wanted to, we could take 21 divided by 8 in our calculator and go from there. But we also know that if we just convert this, it's going to be 2 point something. So if we just do 5 eighths in our calculator and get 0. 0.625, then we know the answer is 2.625. Then we can add that to 3.28 very easily and get our final answer. And then, of course, round to whatever we're supposed to round to. In this case, because our original problem started with two decimals, Unless told otherwise, we normally round our answers to the same number of decimals. So in this case, we would round to two, right? We, so we'd look at the third. It's five, so we round up. And there's our squigglies, right? Our squiggly equals, which means approximately equal to 5.91. If it was me, I would leave it at 0.905. I'd rather carry one extra decimal point and be exactly precise than to round <laughs> and no longer be precise, right? But it just depends on, on what you're asked to do. Our last example, we've got uh, water and wastewater treatment formulas. Flow rates must be expressed in units of millions of gallons per day, so MGDs. However, in real-world situations, measurements of flow are frequently reported in gallons per day. So to convert gallons per day to millions of gallons per day, it's pretty simple. You just have to divide by a million. So for instance, we've got 28,500 gallons per day. We divide that by 1 million, we get 0 0.0285 millions of gallons per day. It's kind of silly, but you know that's what they would want um, in this kind of setting. All right, that's all I have for you.